All right, so today I am going to be sharing, hey, Christina, thanks for having me. Um, I'm gonna be sharing my screen. I have a presentation uh, to give you all, and I'm really excited to be here with, with you all to be supporting in a, in a small way the amazing work that you all are gonna be doing on, on your campus. Um, and Katie's on, yay, hey, Katie. All right, I am about to share my screen. Application. Share. And then let me know if you um, if you all can see my screen and Katie. Um, yeah, if you can mute yourself and let me know if you also see my screen, that'll be great. All right, Katie, can you see my screen? I don't think I can hear you. Yes. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Cool. All right, everyone. I am really excited to be here with you all with my colleague Katie and to just be supporting the work that you're doing on your campuses in a small way. Today we're going to be talking about how you can be using Facebook and Instagram to drive voter turnout efforts um, and to complement a lot of the amazing efforts you all are already doing on your campuses to help students turn out to vote and get the information they need. My name is Nicole. I am on Facebook's Civic Education Partnerships team where my mission is really to support young people and the amazing work that they're already doing um, and, and how they're using social media to drive their advocacy efforts um, and also to help others um, participate in democracy. And with me, I have my colleague, Katie Shade. Katie, feel free to introduce yourself. Hi, everybody. I'm Katie Shade. I am a product manager working on our voter empowerment efforts. Cool. All right, so today we're going to be going over some civic tools that we've launched, that we're launching in the lead up to elections, as well as tools that you can be using to encourage students on your campus to turn out to vote. Um, our goal here with this presentation is really to show you some new tools that we've recently come out with, um, that you can use as resources, that you could share with your um, with your student bodies, as well as help you think creatively about how you can be using existing social media tools to drive education. Uh, throughout this presentation, you'll likely see tools and features within both Facebook and Instagram's apps um, that you probably already use, you're probably experts at using already, and our goal here is really to just help you think creatively about new ways that you can use those tools for uh, the goals that you all have as you're preparing for the elections on your campus. We'll quickly get started um, with um, the, one of the biggest efforts we have going on internally at the company at Facebook is really helping 4 million uh, people register to vote. Um, and really Facebook's mission and one of the core to Facebook's mission is that uh, we were built to help people, uh, to empower people by giving them a voice. And voting is one of the most powerful ways that people's voices can be heard. And so as we take into account that COVID-19 and the pandemic is causing just additional confusion to an already complex election season, um, we built a new uh, tool called the Voting Information Center to give millions of people accurate information about voting and the tools that they need to register and make their voices heard at the ballot box. Um, and this is the tool that Katie and her team have been working diligently to build alongside, um, alongside experts. And I'm gonna toss it over to her to walk you through what these tools are. Nicole, do you mind resharing your screen? It looks like it's still on the first, uh, mm -hmm. the first slide. Let me... While you're doing that, I can start talking a little bit about the voting information centers. There we go. Um, so we've created voting information centers on both Facebook and Instagram to be a source of accurate and reliable information about the upcoming election. And they're designed to help people throughout the entire voting process. 
Um, voter empowerment, as Nicole mentioned, is a huge priority at Facebook and Instagram. And so we're featuring the Voting Information Center at the top of both the Facebook and Instagram apps currently so that this information is very easy to find. And this is really a continuation of the work that we've been doing for the US primaries as well as for elections worldwide for many years. So diving into the Voting Information Center, it includes information on how to vote. So what this means is that it includes information that helps people prepare, prepare to vote, like registering or what their ID requirements are. And it also helps give information about the different ways that people can vote in their state, whether that be by mail or in person. We also have other information such as poll worker recruitment. One of the biggest challenges that we're hearing from election authorities this year with the COVID-19 pandemic is that they have less people signing up for poll, to be a poll worker, and that's putting at risk the ability to run as many polling stations as they would like to. And so it's one of the unique ways that Facebook can help raise visibility to this problem and try to recruit people to help. We also have information on the Voting Information Center um, that are, includes facts about voting. Um, and the purpose of this is to help us address top misconceptions that we're seeing about voting or the election process. And we also have um, recent posts from local and state election authorities to help make sure that the information that we're showing is relevant for the person looking at the surface. You want to switch to the next slide? So to build these products, we work closely with a number of key partners. The first ones are with state election authorities. They help us ensure that our information is both accurate and up to date. And we also, as I mentioned, feature some of their information on the surface itself. We also work very closely with experts and civic organizations. For example, we partner closely with Democracy Works, who runs TurboVote, which is um, one of the places that we will send people to to register to vote if online voter registration is not available in a particular state. This also allows us to have links that are off platform, um, both to state government websites or trusted third party partners, um, depending on what information we're trying to show. Next slide. We also designed the Voting Information Centers to give people the ability to share accurate election information with their friends and community. So on Facebook, what this means is that people can share the Voting Information Center to their newsfeed or to a page. Um, and we also allow people to share registration specific information as well. And then on Instagram, we allow people to share the Voting Information Center to their stories and also have a separate sticker for voter registration as well. And with that, I'll turn it back to Nicole. Awesome. So before we continue with the presentation, um, does anyone have any questions for Katie on the Voting Information Centers on Facebook or Instagram? And then as you have questions, just a reminder, feel free to type them in the chat. Um, I'll check back in on the chat. I can't see the chat while I'm presenting, but I'll check back in and stop sharing my screen just to make sure that we come back to you all and we're answering any questions. Awesome. All right. We will keep it going then. Katie, thank you so much for an overview of the voter information centers. We're really excited to um, just make sure that people have access to accurate authoritative information about elections on our platforms um, and that they're able to get access to those resources easily and share them with their friends. Of course, thanks for having me. Awesome. All right, I'm gonna keep sharing my screen. Um, share. All right. Now we'll transition into going over a few tools that you all probably already know and potentially already use. Um, and we'll just, our goal here again is to um, provide you all with sort of creative ideas for how you can be using these tools as you're mobilizing voter turnout efforts on your campuses. Um, we hope that these tools to complement the already existing efforts that you all are planning to do on your campus um, and help you all scale virtually. The first one I'm gonna be talking about is actually um, a feature that is a part of Facebook groups. And we know that, and perhaps you're a part of Facebook and 
perhaps the primary reason why you use Facebook today is to connect with um, your education communities, right? Your potentially your classmates um, or you know your your fresh the freshman class of 2020, et cetera. Uh, we're seeing a lot of college campuses use Facebook groups um, as a way to connect with with other students. And within groups, there's a feature called units. And these units are basically like educational modules that you can create as an admin of a group on Facebook. And so let's say that you have a, an organization on campus that is going to be mobilizing volunteers to get students to turn out to vote. You can actually build out these educational modules to like train your volunteers on all the things that they need to know before they go out and start um, pushing out information on your campus. Uh, these learning units on Facebook help you really organize content, share educational resources, and even track how many people access and complete these units. Um, you can even create a quiz. So let's say you're looking to train volunteers or even like let's say that you're looking to create a step by step guide on, you know, voting by mail on um, voting by mail for students in your campus. You can create that at the end. People can take a quiz to indicate that they've read all the modules and understood the modules. And so there's a lot of really interesting ways that we're seeing both organizations, college campuses, um, and and student student led organizations use units to train students and provide educational resources to them in an organized manner. You can think of it kind of like a learning as learning modules that you create within a Facebook group. Um, yeah, and some examples for how you might use this as you're creating your your plans for your campus is really training volunteers to help spread resources, walking students through the process of voting, and sharing. Um, sharing resources with instructions. So let me, I think I logged out. Share, here we go. Um, and sharing resources with instructions um, so that your volunteers or other students can share those with their networks. The other interesting tool that we were seeing uh, campuses and a lot of civic orgs use are automated responses. Uh, on Facebook Messenger. And so if you have a page on Facebook for your student organization, for your act, you know, for your actual university, um, or for, uh, for any other purposes, really, you can actually through your page create um, automated responses uh, with uh, that answer frequently asked questions. Uh, and they appear at the beginning of a conversation with your Facebook page. So let's say I'm a student and I go to a university's Facebook page and I click message the page, I click to message the page, immediately some FAQs will pop up. And you can choose to, as an admin of that page, or uh, you can choose to add questions to a menu and people will be able to access that, those questions with their answers throughout the entire conversation. And I think I have a video here that shows you all how you access that through your pages messaging settings. And yeah, there you go. You can create sort of the FAQs that you want to pop up when somebody messages your page um, and you can answer the questions yourself on there and save it. And so some examples of how you might use these instant replies uh, with your Facebook page is really automatically answering the most frequently asked questions that students may have about voting. If, if your university has like a civic engagement office or a service office um, and you all are really trying to promote resources, one of the ways that you can do that is creating these FAQs so that when folks message the page or interact with the page, they're able to see those, the answers to the most commonly asked questions that students ask about voting. The next is going live on Facebook. Um, and really, this just helps you have real time discussions with your audience. Um, you can go live on your own or with another account. We've seen some really great examples of local civic orgs interviewing election officials to ask them the most commonly asked questions that they have or interviewing school administrators about student voting and how the school is getting prepared to you know, help students turn out to vote. Um, even bringing on just everyday students that have a lot of questions about voting and specifically voting as a student and, and on camp on a campus, 
um, bringing on students to sort of have them ask those questions live and then bringing on experts that know the answers to those questions to answer them in real time. So we're seeing a lot of really interesting ways that folks are using Facebook Live. And as you know, as you likely know, when you go live, your most engaged fans of the most engaged fans of your page will get access, will get a notification letting them know that you're going live. So just a way to increase the reach of your videos um, and really discussing and, and having live conversations with your audience. There are also a different post types on, on Facebook and one of them is called lists. So when you go to your Facebook composer, the place where you know the composer, when you log on to Facebook, it'll say what's on your mind. Um, and there's some buttons below that that you can click. There's a list, um, there's a list uh, post type basically a way for you to create an engaging post that provides people with information they need. And you'll see an example of that to the right. You can create this as an admin of the page. Um, and an example is like, here's the, the list of all the things you need when you vote on campus, right? So examples of how you may use this list feature mm -hmm. is creating a list with information on how to vote or information on uh, how to become a poll worker, etc. And these kind of posts, because they um, they are different, just get a lot more engagement. Uh, so a really good way for you all to get your message out as you're creating this content. Before I go into Instagram tools, um, I'm gonna stop sharing and just get come back here to see if any of you all have any questions. Yeah, I see Catherine, Facebook classrooms. Yeah, the learning units are kind of like classroom. It's kind of, and we see teachers use them all the time as well. Um, admitted student, yeah. Student groups, great places to start positive campus voting culture. Is a Facebook private group recommended? Yeah, you can have a unit in a private group, actually. So when you are creating your group, and regardless of the group settings, whether it's a secret group, a private group, or an open group, um, you are able to uh, create these social learning units. All you have to do to, to get access to the units feature um, is to really, is to go to the settings of your group and within the settings, you'll see, you'll be able to click um, social learning unit and then you'll get access to the, a new tab within your group. So if you have a student organization that you lead with like a core group of members that you wanna train on something specific, um, you can do that and, and add units to your, to your group. Um, there we go. All right, feel free to let me know if you have any other questions as you are posting. I am going to share my screen one more time and go into Instagram tools. Um, and then again, I, um, my assumption is that you all are probably aware of Instagram and all the different features and surfaces on the platform. Um, but here, you know, one of the first tools that we also recommend a lot of student orgs uh, use and just local civic organizations is going live on Instagram, again, to directly engage with your audience and provide them with real time information. So uh, we've seen a lot of really awesome student groups also interview, you know, election officials or civic experts, um, bringing students on to ask questions in real time. Uh, we've seen an org interview students on what their vote plans are um, or go live to have a conversation about creating a vote plan um, on live. So some really awesome ways that um, you can be just putting out information that's timely and having those discussions in real time with folks that may have questions. Um, when you go live, you can also, um, now your live videos can also live on IGTV. So when you're done with a live video, you can extend the shelf life of it by adding it to IGTV. And we have this new feature on IGTV called series. And basically a series is kind of like, it allows you to organize your IGTV, uh, IGTV videos all in one place. You can think of it kind of like a folder. So let's say you are a student organization and you have a series about video of, of videos 
only about voting by mail, another one about polling locations on campus and how to vote in person. Um, basically, it's kind of like folders that you can that house all different types of videos that are related to one specific topic. Um, and so an ex examples of how you may use series is really to create educational video content, um, to create a series of videos potentially answering FAQs. We've seen folks create uh, a series of videos interviewing students on their vote plans uh, and and posting a series uh, of interviews with student leaders and campus administrators about a specific topic. So just a really good way to organize your content uh, based on the topics that you're talking about. The next one is Instagram stickers. And, uh, you know, stickers, we've seen folks use stickers in such creative ways to engage with their audiences um, and really just enable them to gather questions from your audience, uh, gather information about them through polls, uh, and even sending them reminders. So a few of the stickers that are available to you are, you know, things like polling, the register to vote sticker on Instagram, when folks click on that sticker in your stories, it'll lead them to the Instagram Voter Information Center where they can find more information about how to register to vote. We've seen folks use the, um, the question tool to gather frequently asked questions about the voting process. We've seen folks use the uh, countdown sticker to highlight key deadlines uh, for students as, they, as they're preparing to, to fill out their ballots and turn out to vote. When somebody clicks the countdown sticker on Instagram, they are able to set a reminder for themselves um, so that you know when it's getting close to the, that date and that time, they'll get a notification on Instagram saying, hey, you set a reminder to do this. So this is just a really good way to start reminding folks and encourage folks to uh, just set reminders for key deadlines. We also see folks use the, the quiz sticker to um, uh, to really like test knowledge of the students in their um, uh, in their organization, so just really good ways to start seeing where your where your audience is at and engaging with them um, in more interactive ways. And as of yesterday, we've started launching some voting specific stickers. So users that tap these stickers while viewing the stories are directed to, um, the, the sticker we launched yesterday is the vote by mail sticker. It's both in English and Spanish. When your audience clicks on the sticker, um, they'll be directed to their state election site to request their ballot um, or back to the voter information center on, on Instagram. We worked with some really dope uh, US-based artists, all super diverse and incredible artists that use, um, that use Instagram and care about uh, the voting process. And so we're really excited to be showcasing their work and the work of the community, the artist community on our platforms. Um, cool. Uh, before I go, um, Cancel before I keep going. Um, any other questions? I see folks use stories. Um, and then I see Terry, you ask, can you go live on more than one Facebook page at the same time? To my knowledge right now, no, you can only go live on one um, at the time, but you can also just share to other pages. So you can share your live video to other pages. After this, um, I'm also going to send you all links to websites that give you a lot, give you guides on how to use specific tools, uh, but then also just give you more sort of creative ideas for how you may be using our platforms and some of these features to uh, to drive the work that you all are already doing. So, I mean, I think the coolest thing about uh, about some of this is just seeing how creative. Uh, student organizations, specifically young people, are using our platforms. It's why I love doing the work I do at Facebook and Instagram. Uh, you all are, you know, a lot of what we, a lot of my role here is really to highlight the amazing work that we're already seeing on the platforms, primarily led by uh, by students. So, um, all right, if there are no more questions on the Instagram portion, I'll go into some of the best practices that we recommend um, student, student leaders and organizations 
um, some of the best practices we give you all to ensure that you're putting out content that um, that is interactive and that works. So I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. Here we go. All right, let's talk about what makes great content. So, um, and I'm gonna use this through a case study of one of my favorite Instagram accounts of all time um, by my friend, Berna. Uh, and content that works is really interactive, right? They answer questions, whether it's on Messenger, on DMs, on your, uh, on your comments, um, comments on your posts, um, content that, uh, that works and by works, I mean content that really surfaces to the top of feed like the more interactive your content is the more people are asking questions and commenting uh, the, the 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 higher the likelihood that your content is going to surface to the top of people's news feeds and one of the really cool things that I and, and creative ways that I've seen folks use a new uh, the new reels tool on Instagram is really to celebrate their community so Berna is what calls herself a financial hype woman. She really cares about teaching people of color about money and how to manage their money and how she learned to pay off debt, et cetera. So she has a really educational page on Instagram and I think has done, has come up with incredibly creative ways to celebrate her community and the wins of her community um, on Instagram. And so for, as an example, every week, Berna asks her followers, you know, what's a money win that you've had this week? Um, and in, in addition to telling me your money win for the week, give me a song and I'll dance for you in celebration of your money win. And so here's an example of her actively using, you know, a sticker on Instagram and then, um, uh, and then posting this content on her feed to celebrate her community. So super interactive, both on its on stories, but then also on her feed. And let me play here. I'm gonna show you how to get it. It go right foot up, left foot slide, left foot. <laughs> so I don't know if you I, if you all are able to hear, but yeah. So she basically is celebrating her community, and her content is extremely just interactive and consistently. Basically, she's consistently co-creating with her followers. Another another best practice is, and I, you know, I hate that this word is so overused, but but it really is content that is authentic. So um, you know, tips that we we tell a lot of folks is really like face the camera as you talk to your followers, talk to them like you're talking to them over your kitchen counter, having snacks with them, like uh, share what you're working on with your community and why you do that work. Um, keep them behind the scenes and you can keep it simple. There is no need to have like a high production, um, a high, highly produced video. I think the more real you are with, with your followers and the more that you share, not, you know, share not just what you're doing, but why you are doing it, the more we see people engage with content and deeply connect with it. Um, and here is an example of Berna. She has a video where she asks, she tells her follower why money matters to her. Um, it talks about her history and her history with money and why she, why she's doing this work and why she's so passionate about helping others uh, to be better with their money. Another example is content that's timely, uh, you know, discussing hot topics, breaking news, um, and, and content that just dives deep into what people are talking about currently. We find that those are the things that also just surface to the top of news feeds all, all the time. And I'm sure you all have seen this with the current climate. Um, and uh, so as, as you are sort of keeping an eye out for recent changes in the voting process in your state or different que timely questions that students may be asking on your campus, make sure that you are sharing content about that. Make sure that you are addressing, uh, addressing concerns and addressing things that are coming out um, as they do. And the next one is content that's consistent. And uh, this is an interesting way to think about it because we wanna make sure that you're providing a diverse set of content and you're using a variety of post types. Uh, but what I mean by consistent is really like people know what they come to your page for, right? Like, in this case for Berna, they know that she's like the money guru, right? They know that she's my financial hype woman for money. Like when I go to her, I am a, I have one mindset and one mindset only. And um, what we see often with accounts that 
uh, aren't getting as much engagement is that they're, they're pretty much all over the place, right? And like when you go and you see, you look at an account, if it doesn't, if you don't immediately understand what it's about, it's going to have less engagement. And so as you are thinking about the content that you're going to, you're, you're putting out, make sure that um, it stays consistent and that people, when they go to your account, know exactly what they're going to be getting in terms of topics, right? But again, uh, you know, you, you can still use a variety of postings. You can post memes, you can post photos, videos, whatever. It's just a matter of like keeping consistent with the theme or the topic that you're talking about. And in this case, you know, Berna has every other day where she posts funny memes about money and starts a conversation in the captions. And then every other day she posts a video. Um, and so she has varied content, but you know exactly what you go to her page for. Cool. Any other, um, any questions that you all have about um, just creating good content across Facebook and Instagram? And in fact, if you have tips, feel free to add them in the comments, um, the comments here, because we'd love to, we, we create, co-create these tips with a lot of our top accounts on Instagram. Um, and, you know, there's no exact right or wrong way to share content and engage with your followers. It really depends on, on your audience, but just ensuring, but, um, if you all have other tips that you know have worked, um, please let me know. And then Gabrielle, yes, we will be, um, uh, sharing, uh, slide these slides in a PDF with you all after this, um, after this presentation. So you'll have access to some of this. Cool. Hey, Erica. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. And then Christina tips on using campus influencers. Oh, this is really interesting as well. This is, um, a, um, you know, I'm sure engaging with, uh, the folks that just have a lot of influence on your campus, whether it's like student body government or athletes or whatnot, like just making sure that you're having a lot of these conversations with, um, uh, with folks that can help scale the messages that you're trying to trying to put out. Yeah, cool. I'm glad, Terry. I'm glad that this is just sparking new ideas. There are truly there are no right or wrong answers. It's really about like how do you brainstorm uh, creative ways that you can be using these platforms to scale the messaging that you're you're looking to scale. Cool. I'm going to share my screen once again. And I'll go over a few tips on how you can create a social media plan. And before I do that, actually, I'll address the fact that, like, you know, if you are leading a student organization on your campus and there's like multiple people that manage the social media, um, that's great. We actually um, man managing social media accounts is actually a lot harder than most people think. Um, it takes a lot to come up with creative concepts that like actually engage people um, and that other people find meaningful. It takes a lot to not just come up with those concepts, but also just create the actual content um, and, and, and create it in a way that really comes across as genuine and, and authentic on, on your page. Um, and then it also, you know, takes a lot to come up with craft the captions and craft ways that you're going to engage your audience. And so, um, as you are creating your social media plans, we actually recommend that you have at least two people working on this within, within your student organization. This is just going to help you have a sounding board, um, have a sounding board. And it's also just going to help you sort of divide up the work, um, on creating content, posting content, and just ensuring that you're responding to your audience, because the more, you, the more responsive you are on these platforms, the 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 higher the likelihood that your content bubbles up to the top of people's news feeds. And so when you're creating these social media plans, it's actually we don't have these, you know, crazy tools that you need to be using or other apps that you need to be downloading. You can do this simply in a Google sheet and in a in a Google sheet or an Excel sheet um, where you're just mapping out your content. You know, we have, I think, 52 days to the election. You sit down, you open up a Google sheet and you map out what the next 52 days are going to look like on this sheet, right? And so I'm going to share my screen and go over with you guys how you, a recommendation for how you can do this and get organized as you are mapping out your content. Cool. 
All right, so the way we talk about this, um, about creating a social media plan is really in five steps. And the first step is identifying your themes and ideas. Uh, and think about, you know, with this, we ask you to think about the types of posts that you wanna share, um, like going behind the scenes, uh, giving people spotlights or tips. I mentioned that Berna has, you know, a weekly highlight of her community's money wins, right? What does that hi weekly highlight look like for your student organization? Is it a weekly highlight of a student that, you know, went through uh, went through the process of registering to vote? Is it a weekly highlight of a student that created a vote plan that you want to showcase? Um, so really just thinking about the themes that you're going to be covering, right? And so like, let's say every Monday you post a community spotlight. Every Tuesday you have a tip on a specific topic. Every Wednesday you're going live with a civic expert. Every Thursday you're engaging a campus influencer. Every Friday, you know, whatever that is, when you have themes, it is just easier to plug and play um, as opposed to having to come up with completely new ideas every single day. So it makes it just easier for you to sort of work within the the, um, the lines of, of specific themes on certain days. The second step is to determine the visual format, right? And so like, whether it's live videos or photos or, you know, stories or collections, these are like when you have multiple photos in an Instagram post, think about which format helps you convey your message best. And one way to do this is as you're thinking about, you know, Berna, as an example, has her community spotlights are always videos. And she always does the same process. Every Friday, she will she will ask her community on Instagram stories, Get, tell me your money wins and a song you want me to dance to to celebrate you. And then every Monday, she will record herself dancing and then post those on reels on Instagram. It's a very specific. It's, it's a very specific process. It's laid out, and people know what they come to her account for, right? And so they they see that consistency, even though they see a variety of types of posts. The third is just thinking about your captions, right? This way, you can just copy and paste your captions when it comes time time to post. If on if you have a Facebook page on your Facebook page, you can actually. Um, schedule posts ahead of time. So my recommendation is if you already have this content ready, start scheduling so that you don't have to wake up every day and worry about what you're posting. Um, take, you know, take a day to just think through, through what that's going to look like, what your week is going to look like and schedule your posts. The other thing is don't forget to include hashtags. Actually, when we look at um, some of the insights of the posts that perform best for um, student organizations, civic orgs, or any really like nonprofit orgs that we've worked with, when we look at the insights, we see that most people discover their post through a hashtag. So a recommendation is really just make sure you have hashtags as you are, and, and then tagging the right people so that um, your, con your content is just scaling, it's more easily discoverable on the platform. The fourth step, again, is planning your dates, you know, determining when you're going to be sharing those posts, at what time, and who's going to be doing it, and then making sure that you're creating the content, uh, whether it's you're shooting a video, you're shooting an interview, et cetera. And so the way a simple, um, you know, one, one line of your social media plan looks like is just like this, right? You have a date on when this is going to happen. You have the theme, the format that it's going to go into, the description of the content, you know, the visual type, um, you know, the caption or the media that you're going to add to it, who's going to uh, who's going to create the content and then who's going to post it on the actual date. And so what's what's interesting about this is and what we often see with um, organizations in general is that they need to get content approved before it goes live. Um, and this just makes it really easy for you to have all your content in one place, get approvals ready, ready to go. And then when it comes to posting, you can just start posting, right? And so this makes it easy for you to have everything in one place um, and just be really organized with how you're gonna be coming out with this content. Um, it's always, um, let me stop sharing my screen and go back on here. Um, I know we have a couple of minutes left, just three minutes left. And so I want to make sure that I come back to you all, see if you have any other questions. I will share 
a PDF of this deck with the summit organizers so that you all get them, get it in your inbox and are able to refer back to it. Um, but, and then any other links that, that are going to be helpful for you all. But as you are creating your vote plans for the vote plans for your campus, and as you're working to encourage your, uh, the students in your campus to turn out to vote, think about creative ways that you can do that, that you can engage your audience. Um, and, um, and, and get that going. Matthew, I see that you asked, how do you get started from zero in terms of presence? And that's a really good question. I think really starting that conversation with your organization, the chapter of your org, on what is your goal, right? Like first starting with like, what is the goal of this account, right? As you saw on, on Berna's page, it's very clear what her goal is. Her goal is to educate communities of color on money. Have a very specific goal in mind um, when you start, I think that's that's the number one thing uh, when you when you're starting to post. And then two is cross posting, right? As you're starting to create content, make sure that you have good content, that your bio is clear, that you just the purpose of your work online is clear. And then as you are sharing content, just making sure that you're just you're you're talking to. Um, other organizations that have a, a bigger presence than you do, doing joint lives with them. The, slowly but surely, you start getting more followers on your accounts. The other thing you can do is you can boost your posts um, to folks in your city and in, in targeted ways. So, but that takes money. But if your organization has budget, um, it really doesn't take a lot a lot to scale to to promote your posts on Instagram. Um, there is a whole process if you are doing posts about voting, you have to get verified. It's, it's a long process. Not just anyone is able to do that. Um, of course for security reasons, but, um, my number one tip, if you're getting started from scratch is have a clear purpose. Awesome. I think my time is up, but thank you all so much for joining me. And uh, I can't wait to sort of follow along and see see the content you all are creating. Um, and I'll, I'll follow up with, with the deck.